Lesson 29, we're going back into the history of the Persian Empire. In fact, it's called the Media Persian, Medio Persian Empire. Why? Because they united two arms together, two kingdoms united together to overcome Babylon, remember. So let's talk about this. The Median Empire um, was up towards the north in Asia Minor to the Indus River, covering close to the Caspian Sea and the Persian Gulf. You can look on your map to see that. Its capital was Ekbatana. Ekbatana was the capital, um, and it was a big, huge city. The southern part was called Persia, and it was now you probably centered in what we call Iran. In fact, Iranians still call themselves Persians. Can you believe that? Because Persia was pretty much their country. Well, the ruler in 600 BC was Cyrus I, and he ruled from 599 to 558 BC, but his son was known as Cyrus the Great. Cyrus the Great, Cyrus number two, he captured Ecbatana first, and he united with the Medes in 549 BC. Um, he captured Sardis in 547 BC, and then he captured Babylon in 539 BC in October, and we went over that day. And then he gained, in doing this, he gained control too of Israel. So we had Israel and the Israelites um, in his mind, well, in his in his empire, I should say. Um, his son was Cambyses the second, and he was the he was. He, he, his son went in after him and he captured Egypt. Um, Cyrus II died in 529 and he has a huge, huge palace tomb. So we know a lot about Cyrus the Great and his son. His son lived um, in 529 to 521 BC, had already established the largest empire in the history of the world. Look at your maps and you'll see the size of Bab the Babylonian Empire, the size of the Syrian Empire, you know, um, you'll see this, the size, but then you'll see the size of Persia. It was huge. It was huge. Um, Cam uh, Cambys Cambysis was assassinated on his way home from Egypt after he conquered Egypt. And so the king Darius, or Darius, the first, called the Great, um, became in charge in 486 BC and he's the one that's recorded in the Bible now some will say that he's a Persian king but in the Bible it actually says he's it's a he he's a um, Medianite king so two arms so when Cyrus was over here on one side Darius may have been in the other side they may have lived towards the same time but we don't know for sure but we do have recorded about Darius. You know, he's the one that had thrown Daniel into the lion's den, which I'm sure you heard about. You probably heard that Bible story. Darius didn't want to, but he had to because that's what the law said. And the law was with the Medes and the Persians, so he couldn't change a law. But he was very relieved when the lions didn't even touch Daniel. The, the lions just fell asleep, I think. They never, and Daniel came out alive. That's Darius. So, well, let's go back and talk about the government and stuff. Well, the government, the government was of the Persian government at that time was, was 33 nations, and they all gave tribute. That means they paid money to the Persian king. Um, Darius' son was called Xerxes, X-E-X-E's. Xerxes. And um, his son conquered um, conquered the rest of the area, made it even larger, larger areas. But he was harsh, but he wasn't as harsh as the Assyrians. And so he usually allowed the people to have their own customs and their language and their religion. And he would govern these districts with what was called satraps. Satraps the, uh, would be... Um, these areas, and the only only men that he liked or he that he felt that he trusted, would be able to be a satrap. 
and they and um, the secretaries would come from each, each of the satraps and report and bring news and pay taxes to the king. The whole, the three huge kingdoms came together and they had four capitals. One capital was at Susa, you can see on your map. The next capital was at Ecbatana and the next, of course, was Babylon. They had conquered Babylon and then Persis. They had this, the capital, so they had to travel quite a distance in their huge empire. So they had a road and the road was called the Royal Road. Darius built the Royal Road. It was 1,500 miles long from the Mediterranean coast to Susa. Quite a road. In fact, they'd have like pony expresses to travel this road. And the pony expresses um, would only take seven days. If you were to travel this road on your own, it could take up to three months travel. So the, these, these ponies were pretty, pretty fast. <laughs> And then we have, of course, what's called, now we have, we, we know um, what this cylinder is called, the Cyrus Cylinder. What is the Cyrus Cylinder? Well, it, it was a, a clay cuneiform tablet, this whole thing, what it, it recorded what Cyrus did. And the main thing that's recorded what Cyrus did on this tablet is that he declared to let the Jews go back to Jerusalem and rebuild their temple on the Cyrus Cylinder. It's recorded in history. So he recorded legally. There we have, we even have it today. <laughs> How amazing is that? That on that, that just what was prophesied, that 70 year period that was prophesied, that they would be able to go back to Jerusalem. There's some other things recorded on there, but that, is the main historic event, especially for the Israelites. Let's go back to the Persians. What was it like to live there? They were very family-centered, kind of like us. Their father was the head, and then they had families, and their families had clans, groups, family members got together in clans, and then the clans had tribes. Um, Cyrus the, the second was the was in the ruling clan, and the royal family was the highest status. And then came the priests. And the priests were called magi. It's kind of a weird thing. And then came the scribes. And they recorded the king's decrees. And they would have to write and speak in all these different languages. Persians, Akkadian, and all the other languages around. Probably even Hebrew. And then came the officers. And the officers were very wealthy. They actually um, had gold and silver furniture in their house. That's how wealthy they were. And then the nobles. And the nobles were, were those that had promised loyalty to the king. In case they had a big war, they would come and fight in the war. Persia had also had grand, huge buildings and monuments that um, the kings had built there. So throughout, stone workers came from Egypt, and many of the slaves, even Jews, came, and they built these, these huge monuments. Now, um, when you talk about their gods, um, the Persians went to into a new religion. It's recorded, and this is kind of important because it's not like um, worshiping many gods. Is they they believed that there was one god that was important, and this religion was called Zoroastrianism. Zoroastrianism. Can you say that? Were the teachings of Zoroaster. <laughs> this guy in 600 BC. He said, basically, there's one good God, and he's in conflict with an evil God. Well, so there's more than one God, but, but there's basically a good and there's evil, a e good force and an evil force, right? And he also believed that, that all will be judged on their goodness or their evilness for eternity. They believe, he believed in truthfulness and kindness and love were important, and he was against pridefulness and any kind of, um, you know, slander, and he was, a, he was against um, adultery and all these things. He was against all these things, kind of like the Ten Commandments, but, you know, he didn't know the Ten Commandments. And he thought that a good God would triumph. So this started coming to Persia, kind of like this whole belief system was a little different than all these weird gods. They had no idea about any of them, right? 
So, um, Persia kind of got a little bit different, was a little bit different than the Babylonian concept. But anyway, they still didn't know the true and living God. Although, now they were exposed to the Jews and the Hebrew God as the Jews had been um, in their land and they were going traveling back. And we know that Cyrus was exposed to them because he knew he was prophesied. In fact, they got out the book and they said, hey, Cyrus, Daniel probably got out the book, said, hey, Cyrus, did you know that your your name is in our book? It was written by Isaiah 100 years ago that you would, you would be the one that would um, bring, um, send the, the captives back to Israel. He probably said, wow. And he probably thought about, I must do that then. He probably read it a couple times. It has his exact name. It's written in the Bible. <laughs> Can you believe that? So the Jews leave Persia to go home. It's recorded in the Bible. Um, four Persian kings. Cyrus the Great. Darius is in the Bible. Xerxes. Or you might say um, uh, Hazarus. Hazarus. Or Xerxes. Or Art Artaxerxes. They're on the Bible. <laughs> and they're in different parts of the Bible, but during this period of time. So, in 539 B.C., Cyrus II issues this decree allowing the Jews to return to Jerusalem. Their 70-year exiles ended just as prophesied. And now you'll see through Ezra, Nehemiah, the rebuilding of the temple. Nehemiah rebuilding the walls of the temple. The decree says, Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth and has appointed me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is, in Ju which is Judah. Whoever there is among you, all his people, may the Lord God be with him and let him go up. How amazing is that? Daniel worked in the Persian government under Cyrus and Darius. And Darius was appointed commissioner over 120 satraps. And so, um, and he was the one that had to throw him into the, den, the lion's den, as you know. King Xerxes followed him, and he had 127 provinces. And he's recorded in the book of Esther because he ends up marrying a, a Jew, a Hebrew that he doesn't know. And she ends up for such a time as this, is saving her people during a time of persecution. Kind of during this all the same time, the Xerxes is her husband. And then there's King Artaxerxes. He was uh, the king with Nehemiah being his cupbearer, where Nehemiah desired to go back and rebuild the walls. Artaxerxes is recorded too. So here we have God accomplished his will through pagan rulers. The last thing I want to do is I want to read from the Bible Isaiah when it talks about Cyrus prophesied a hundred years before Cyrus was even born. It is I who says Cyrus, he is my shepherd and he will perform all my desire. And he declares Jerusalem, she will be built and of the temple your foundation will be laid. Thus says the Lord to Cyrus, his anointed, whom I have taken by the right hand to subdue nations before him and to loose the loins of kings, to open doors before him so that the gates will not be shut. I will go before you and make the rough places smooth. I will shatter the doors of bronze and cut through their iron bras and bars. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden wealth secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who calls you by name. God calls us by name. He called Cyrus, and God used him in a special way. Hey, maybe we'll see, see Cyrus the Great in heaven. Maybe we'll see Artaxerxes. Maybe we'll see Xerxes. <laughs> you know, maybe we'll see Darius. Who knows? They were all exposed to the God of heaven.